how do you suppress Tor? If you're here, you probably want to live longer, you want to slow down aging. And you probably have heard that Tor, the Tor pathway, also called mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, is an important component on in how you can reverse aging, slow down aging, and live longer and healthier. And that is absolutely true. Tor is an extremely important pathway. And today I'm going to show you three ways to suppress Tor in order to live longer and healthier. Let's start. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Riman. Okay, let's begin with what is TOR. TOR is a genetic mechanism located in every cell in our bodies, and it's particularly sensitive to how many amino acids we have. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein, the tiny elements that build up the proteins that we eat. So the purpose of TOR is to make a decision whether the cell can grow or whether the cell could stay and repair itself, use the energy to repair instead of grow. And because of that, there is a massive implication to that mechanism. One of the implication is that TOR, reducing TOR reduces cancer because it suppresses growth. But from longevity perspective, it also means that if you suppress TOR, you in essence allocate more resources to repair the damage of living, of life. So you're going to increase your, your longevity. Another important impact of TOR that I feel nobody really speaks about is that TOR of the liver can control the blood sugar. Now, I view blood sugar, the blood sugar levels that we have, is also an indication of aging. I believe that the rest of the body gets messages from those uh, blood sugar levels. I honestly believe that. And the rest of the body can make a decision, the rest of the cells in our body can make a decision whether to preserve youthfulness and increase your lifespan and longevity based on the communication, which is the uh, sugar levels that you have. In TOR of the liver, the TOR pathway of the genetic pathway of the liver cells, it can control to a great extent the blood sugar that we have. So let me tell you three simple ways to reduce TOR. We want to suppress TOR. When we suppress TOR, this is where we get the benefits and also the protection from all sorts of diseases. The first way to reduce TOR, to suppress TOR, is control how much protein you eat. And this is important. On the one hand, we need protein to live. We need protein to repair tissues and grow hair and grow nails and repair the bones, for example, and recover from exercise. On the other hand, excess protein impacts TOR. Now, that's interesting because there is a lot of talk about animal-based protein and plant-based protein and how animal-based protein activates TOR more. However, very few people really talk about the importance of your total protein intake from all sources. And Dr. Ron Rosedale, he convinced me that the total protein intake means the greatest impact on controlling your TOR. Now, TOR knows that you need to eat a certain amount of protein to live. So if you eat just that amount, it's going to keep its head down. The problem with TOR begins when we eat beyond our protein requirement. So what you want to do is calculate your daily protein requirement and only eat exactly that or even a tiny bit less supposed to be okay. So how much protein you need? There are formulas to calculate how much protein you need. And you know, I may create another video to expand on this formula. Generally speaking, most men need between 50 to 60 grams of net protein a day. I'm going to explain what net protein means. And most women need between 40 to 50 net protein per day. And both women and men can add additional 10 to 15 grams of net protein in days they doing high intensity training or very fatiguing exercise. Now, what does net protein mean? If you take, for example, meat, it contains protein, fat, and water. The net protein is only 25% of most red meat. So if you eat 100 gram or maybe three ounce steak, you only have about 25 grams of protein. Egg, for example, can weigh, I think, like 50 grams, and it contains about 6 to 5, 7 grams of net protein. So this is the net protein. 
this is the uh, thing that you need to calculate how much you eat every day, and you don't want to eat above that. That's the most valuable, important thing you can do to reduce TOR. How is it possible to eat every day so little protein? Well, this is really a difficult and challenging thing that you need to integrate into your lifestyle. But one of the ways to do that is to eat more fiber and more fat, because both fiber and fat do not have protein inside. So you want to eat, for example, butter that doesn't have a protein at all. Now, the next way to control your TOR levels, and this is really advanced way, you all need to do that once to control your protein intake, which is creating a lifestyle where the uh, 50, 60 grams of protein a day that you eat doesn't ha include too many essential amino acids and arginine. Let me explain. This is extremely, extremely interesting, and that's the core of the debate of protein from animals and from plants. Okay, so this is how it goes. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein, the tiny elements that build up the proteins that we eat. Out of the 21 amino acids that build up this protein, about 9 of them are essential. These amino acids the body cannot manufacture. Now, this is really important, so listen to this. Our body is not stupid. Our body tries to discover whether we live in abundance or scarcity. Now, the body knows it cannot make a decision whether we live in abundance based on the other uh, 12 amino acids that it can manufacture. But Because how can it know for sure whether it's an uh, indication of abundance outside of the body or just manufacturing within the body? So what happens that the nine amino acids, they tend to stimulate TOR the most. These are isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. The ninth amino acid is histidine, and it's arguable whether it's really essential or not. So it's probably somewhere between eight to nine amino acids. Now, you probably have heard that leucine is the strongest activator of TOR. But from my research, I noticed that essentially all these amino acids, to some degree, activate TOR. In fact, one amino acid that is not essential is called L-arginine. It activates TOR very strongly, yet it's not essential. What you want to do is within those uh, 50 to 60 grams of protein a day that you eat, you only want to include the minimal amount, the minimal requirement of these essential amino acids, because... On the one hand, they produce a nourishment to the body. The body cannot live without them. On the other hand, if you eat in excess of these amino acids, then you activate TOR beyond what is necessary. In other words, we want to create a, a diet that minimizes the damage from eating, from, from nutrition. Then it begs the question, how many of these essential amino acids do you really need? Now, here I'm going to put to you According to my research, how many? what's the minimum amount of essential amino acids we need per day? Now, let me tell you something that I've done personally. I used to uh, consume a lot of whey protein. And when I did this analysis, I realized that I consume way too much leucine, about two to three times, and way too much lysine, and way, way too much valine than what my body has to have. So what it means that even if I eat the correct amount of protein, I expose TOR to too many essential amino acids beyond what I could get away with. So I'm going to activate TOR more than what I really need. So then it goes to another question, which is, I heard that animal-based protein has more leucine, which is true. So what I thought, let's replace the whey protein I used to consume with a, a protein that has the least amount of leucine. And you know which protein powder has the least amount of leucine? Hemp. Hemp protein. So I went to hemp protein, and lo and behold, it has a massive amount of L-arginine, which to me is much worse. Let's talk about L-arginine. Here are three studies that talks about L-arginine. And I'm going to get back to hemp powder as well, because this is important when it comes to, to plant-based protein. This study from 2022 says... In mammals, TOR is especially responsive to levels of essential amino acid leucine and conditionally essential amino acid arginine. Conditionally essential means it's not essential, as I, as I mentioned before. 
SLC38A9, an amino acid transported localized uh, to the membranes of lysosomes, was the first proposed arginine sensor for TOR. So we know that TOR is specifically sensitive to arginine. This is another study. L-arginine supplementation increased the rate of protein synthesis in the phosphorylation of mTOR. These results indicate that L-arginine stimulates protein synthesis by activation of mTOR. This is a third study. L-arginine stimulates the mTOR signaling pathway and protein synthesis in porcine cells. So this clear indication that arginine, which is really common in plant protein, in some plant protein, not all of them, also increase mTOR. And to me, L-arginine is the worst offender because not only it increased mTOR, but it doesn't nourish the body. So you give the body something it doesn't really need, yet you get all the negative impact of TOR. Now let's get back to my discovery when I tried to uh, transition out of whey protein. I went to hemp protein. So even though hemp protein has about a third less essential amino acids, it compensates with having extra arginine. So here is what you want to do if you really want to optimize TOR, if you're one of those freaks like myself who want to take TOR to, to the next level. So what you want to see once you establish habits of protein consumption daily, then you want to go over your protein sources. And you want to compare them to the table I showed you before and make sure you only get the minimum amount of um, essential amino acids and you really do want to minimize arginine. The body doesn't need arginine. The body, when you're healthy, you're not under a lot of stress, you're not injured, and yet you're not a growing infant, then your body can synthesize arginine. That's the way you want to get arginine, not from food. You don't want to signal abundance to the DNA and to the TOR pathway. We spoke about animal protein and plant-based protein. And it is true that if you eat only uh, meat, for example, you're going to get within the 50 to 60 grams of protein per day, much higher amount of essential amino acids. In many ways, uh, animal-based protein, and especially meat, nourishes the body to a larger degree. And this nourishment is beyond the needs of our bodies, and that, that causes TOR to uh, be activated beyond what we really want if you want to slow down aging and increase longevity and healthy lifespan. The third way to control TOR is reduce insulin by reducing carbs and sugars. Protein and amino acids are the strongest stimulation to TOR, but it's not the only stimulation of TOR. TOR receives messages and input from everywhere, from almost anything that we eat. And insulin and sugar both activate TOR. TOR specifically has a mechanism for glucose. Glucose alone can feed into TOR. But more importantly, insulin control TOR2. So we have TOR1, which controls the autophagy, the recycling of bad proteins. Then we have TOR2, which has less to do with autophagy, but more with apoptosis. So this probably can protect us from cancer, for example. So both insulin and sugar levels can also stimulate TOR, not to the same degree of the first and second steps I mentioned, but also the, the feed into TOR. So what you want to do is to limit as much as you can the amount of carbs and sugars that you eat. It's going to reduce insulin, and that is also going to reduce TOR and also the sugar levels within the cell. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And if you want me to produce more videos about different topics and research on longevity and youthfulness preservation, let me know in the comment section. And make sure to check the rest of the guides on this channel.